I can hear your needles. You can hear my needles. I don't know if people at home can, but I can. There she is. Because I know, don't knit and I'm, quietly. I'm not being loud right now, so the microphone's probably like. Microphone. That I'm morning. Good morning. That I'm. I'm still. <coughs> I'm still somewhat like ashamed that I never figured out until now how to work. Um, I would never have figured it out. We were just talking about that. Yes. So um, ever. It should just work, right? You know. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the Sun Dragon Side Show. Today's the Dear Becky and Lizzie edition, but we don't have With any a twist questions. So yeah. So I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in Overcast and probably going to rain later, Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz. I'm the millionaire. And and. We are unintentionally matchy matchy. It's casual Thursday, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't figure out what to wear. And I was so, like, So, you know, I have a shop shirt. Here's the funny thing. Okay. So, yes, you have a shop shirt. You have one shop shirt. I have one shirt. shop shirt. We had this promo that Big Frog um, t shirt printing, which is a place near us with a really nice guy who runs it out in Nashville, was doing to, um, to kind of help out local businesses. And it was a really good deal for us on how much money we can make off the shirts. And I ordered like 10 to have a whole wardrobe because that's what I wear. I wear jeans and a t-shirt to the shop. And when they first came out, we both ordered just one just to test it. And I think this is, these are this the- This is my, my first. I think we both my got only. blue, right? Yeah. Like, and, and I have two blue ones now. One looks more like hers because hers, the colors are much brighter because she doesn't wear it as often as I do. I've almost worn out my first set of shirts. Like like the seams are starting to come apart a little bit because I just wash and wear like every, every week. Yeah, each one gets worn. But now that I have 10, it's not like each one gets worn once a week. It's maybe once every other week. So they might last, but yeah, mine's, mine's a little more faded anyway. Yeah, to get back to what Liz was saying, <laughs> um, we don't have any Dear Becky and Lizzie questions today. And as I said yesterday, that's okay. I had a plan. I kept talking about all these new yarns that we have and new, new colors. colors, new colors of yarns we already possess. And I kept not, we kept running out of time to show them off. So, um, so we're going to do a little bit of that. We today. might have a problem with squirrels and you know chasing butterflies yeah literally when literally. we're working on our papillons um before we dive into that mm -hmm. i had to share this because then i can share how much progress i make over the weekend because maybe i'll finish it um i was talking we talked about um bamboo pop yesterday and we actually are going to um re show some new yay colors um, I put all the colors up online, by the way, in the online shop, and you can tell which ones have maybe been around and not reordered in a while because they look a little sadder in the pictures. Because these little balls, like like this is one that has been sitting in, um, in the pit of despair. It's actually in pretty good shape for sitting in the pit of despair for like Ever. a year and a half. But look, I want to say you were working on that before we moved over. Here. Just before I think we moved over here, which... Yeah, about a year and a half ish, give or take, maybe a little longer. Um, I think we, when we moved over here, it was in a bin that ended up in the pit of despair. So yeah, it's seen slightly better days, but this is what happens. These, these cute little balls that don't really fit on a shelf very well. They could kind of stack. We have balls like this over that way that kind of work and kind of fall out. But like when they fall and you put them back and you have to look through them, they start to fall apart. Um, so some of our new colors are still all pretty and shiny, but, but I showed this off. This is cotton performance. Um, and I'm forgetting the lady's name already again, but it, um, it, it's in the description from yesterday. And I tagged her on Instagram when I posted about doing this this morning and she's already said hi from Bulgaria. Yay. It was so cute. So, um, it's something with an N. It's like Natalia or something like that. And uh, my brain, not quite as tired as yesterday, but my brain. And I was saying how I had just 
barely gotten a hint of the first row of teal. And now I have more. Look, now you can see what happens with the teal. It's going to stripe in. It's going to stripe in. See how th this one up here does a does a chunk, 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 chunk. This one down there is doing the chunk, 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 chunk now, which actually it's fun. It's made by doing two rows of the teal and then the gray when it goes back across dips down and makes it look more like it's got a little stuttery thing going on. It's really cool, really fun pattern. I have another section of the brambles, which is here to go, and then some stripies after I finish this little section I'm on, and then I'm done. So maybe I could do it this weekend. Although um, we might have a fun discussion on Tuesday about what happens, well, first of all, when your yarn gets tangled, but what happens when you don't buy enough of the one dye lot, because this is all I have left of the graphite, and I'm pretty sure to finish this, I'm going to have to use a skein of the new graphite that just came in and we'll see if it matches or not because there's a good chance it won't because it's been a year and a half so when you don't buy enough for your project right. all at once and you end up maybe with different dialects this could be a great experiment to show that off or we might not notice and go huh well and depending on where the placement is like if it's a broken up if you have enough to finish this section and you throw your brambles in I won't, but yeah you know you yeah. might not even notice. They will be much less. Yes, yeah. that's a very good thing is, is to talk about like if you have to use two different dye lots, if you can strategically place it where there's color in between, it's maybe not going to be as noticeable or it'll, or your brain will go, it's my brain doing that and not that they're different dye lots. Yeah. Like you'll be able to, to fool people. So um, I'm really excited about this. It, it's, it's so soft. Like I... I had to go home and, and try to figure out what hook did I use on this. I'm a loose crocheter. It calls for a really small hook, which I think the cotton that the lady who wrote this pattern used was thinner than what I'm using. So I started out with a hook that was maybe a size smaller than what this recommends, maybe two sizes smaller and one size. I think this recommends a G and I tried an F because I'm a loose crocheter. And then I was like, this is, this is, it's looser than the rest of it and it's kind of doing a little bit of a ripply thing i could have let it go i could have i didn't <laughs> um i went down the, the next hook i had at home was a d and after that i don't have a smaller one in my likes that i absolutely love to use and so i did it with a d and i'm pretty happy with how it looks on the d but it's tight but here's the crazy thing, even though it, it's not super tight, but it's tighter than you would get using the recommended hook for this yarn. It's tighter than I'd get. It's still really soft. It's so soft and squishy. I might put together some kits for this. And part of what will help me decide is once I finish it, I'll know how many skeins of yarn at least I used. Now, if you decide to go with a bigger hook, because you you want something that is more loose and flowy and big and yay, then um, it's gonna eat up. More it's gonna yarn. use more yarn. Crochet eats up yarn. We had someone who was shopping outside for pillows a couple days ago, and because crochet, because the, the stitches involve more yarn. That's all there is to it. And it and I love crochet, but it it can be more cost prohibitive depending on what you're making because it, it uses more yarn the the math it says it eats up about a third more yarn than knitting for the same area yeah. basically um and and so you have to know that going in and so i can kind of estimate knitting how much certain things might use but when someone asked me about crochet i kind of throw my hands up in the air because i'm not as i i haven't done as much crochet to be able to roughly estimate but either knit or crochet, you run into the issue of everybody knits and crochets differently. So you might use massively different amounts of yarn for the same project. I, I've i crocheted forever. Mm -hmm. I just don't pay attention to how much yarn goes <laughs> so into something. So when someone says, like, what do I need? I don't oh. know. <laughs> I, I, I did a king size Afghan and I weighed the yarn that I had in my stash. And it was like 14 pounds of yarn. I have no idea how many went in, I, I know it was probably close to 10 pounds, went into the blanket, but I didn't pay attention. Like it was a scrappy blanket. So I'd crochet a row and then switch yarn. And I, I don't pay attention to that. You just, 
buy a sweater quantity amount of yarn for whatever you want to do and you're never sad <laughs> anyway, I, I, I really love this color combo this is brambles and graphite and sage and ink blue mm -hmm. and i actually love it so much i put them all in one picture when i took pictures for the bamboo pop so I, the ink blue is just a gorgeous it's gorgeous it's what i made this little um ridicule. fairfax reticule bag from jane austen knits this took like a skein or two or something this start this one started i don't know if i'm going to find the pattern and put it up for y'all I'll, I'll see if i remember it's from a magazine it's not for the faint of needle it starts at this bottom part that spirals out and it starts with like nine stitches or less maybe six stitches on double points and then you start building and so it's a little challenging it's a little challenging but it's super cute you know and i'm not necessarily going to actually use this it was just a cute thing for the shop but it's a very very pretty color oh, i think almost all of these colors have that kind of barber pole slight like really tonal but actually look like two different colors if you look really like it gives it color depth you know it gives it color texture instead of actual texture uh rather than um a heather or something like if i hold this really 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 close you can see that on the solids on the the stripies on the multicolors the I mean, multi they, they have their own multicolors well it, not not all the solids have this barber pole either, yeah though so you know anyway yeah it's weird i picked ones that all had barber pole and were dark and broody if you look at the picture of color performance like the 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 cover photo it's all bright and cheery colors and i just went a different direction this would look wonderful in bright and cheery colors so um anyway moving on it was pre-covid oh, she was in her dark and broody phase because i'm not dark and broody <laughs> now that covid's hit you're doing a yellow so i'd say neon yellow but it's not neon yellow no. you're doing a very yellow I am I am branching out and doing and all kinds of actually things. since COVID, you're not all dark and broody. I mean, you've been doing a lot Just of in lighter. My soul. <laughs> <laughs> you've been doing a lot of lighter stuff. Well, you gotta fight it somehow. Mm. <laughs> um, and I started a gauge swatch with my Belviso. I knit two rows. And then I went home really That's tired. That's about all the gauge swatch you should do anyway. You can't measure this, Liz. I know. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to do this more, but I went home last night and it was I was so painfully tired. I just barely worked on this. So this didn't happen, but I was ready to work on this. And uh, by the way, as a reminder, I'm making this cute little top that I put the link in the last video. And if I can, I'll put it in this one in the description. So. Um, oh, I got fuzzies. It's either cat hair or fuzzies. I don't know. All over my face. It's yarn fuzzies. It you. could be cat hair from inside my mask too. Cat's been very shedy lately. But, you know. Um. All right. So I'm saving. I'm oh, poor little guy. I banged the table. I was wondering how long he was gonna last. I know he doesn't always sit up straight. So <coughs> there we go. Now he's just listing. So um. Two new I'm colors. I'm saving this for last. Of bamboo pop. Mm -hmm. They they are um they're both the multicolor, the orchid smash, which from far away probably looks like it's just purple, but it's 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 mild, variegated. Yeah. Oh, he went the other way now. I wanted him to like be visiting, for the show. Well, but... then what you have to do is lean his little nose over the computer edge. Like that, but then no. Oh, he's cute then. Yeah, but but just he's not tall enough. Just, just there, kind of. He's not gonna stay up like that. Let's see if he stays. That's funny. Okay. He doesn't look very good like that. <laughs> um, keep talking. I'm fiddling. Uh, anyway, we got tribe and the orchid, and the orchid is very nice. Bunch of purples soft purples soft purples i really 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 like it because it's mild and then yep. the other one is like the exact Bam. opposite tribe yep. is just like you're almost holding it off camera but yep. that's okay i was just now because i was putting <laughs> it down tribe has like has has jewel tones and golden yellows and it's just pretty so it will it something like this 
it might this there's a lot of pattern in this texturally so that's why I picked solid colors but something that doesn't have a lot of pattern texturally the multicolor would be fantastic for absolutely fantastic for because then my rule of thumb I'll say it before I say it again tends to be um like busy pattern complicated pattern simple yarn so one tone or you know something not super busy and if you have a simple pattern or not a busy pattern, then pick a busy yarn for it because that could show off the yarn really, really well. Let the yarn do the work. I mean, what I'm wearing has some texture in it. I, this could have gone either way. This is the Lightweight Hipster by Hohi Locatelli. And there's some texturally busy things in the pattern, but then there's whole sections where like nothing is happening. It's garter. It's, you know, so this can go either way. Like there's parts of this you can't see the stitch work I did because the yarn is so busy. And then there's parts of this because this, the, the stitch work is so plain, it shows off this color really well. And, and on the flip side, there are yarns that are so incredibly busy. It's like tiny all little over specks. Busy. They're all over busy. Mm -hmm. You can do anything you want with those because it just, yeah. We have a, um, we, we have a cabled hat here somewhere with a yarn we don't really carry anymore that we, I did it as a cable hat, even though it's a busy yarn, because it's so busy, it, you can still see the cables. But if it was a variegated yarn with chunks of color, it wouldn't, then work. you wouldn't see the cables quite as well. That's a personal preference thing at that point, but you know, okay. The Bill so, Viso that we just showed, you just yes, showed these off. These are reminders of yesterday, reminder. right? Um, we have the very light, what? Hold on, hold on. Do you notice anything specific in these two new yarns? No. We seem Blues to like some colors. And purples. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Either we're drawn to those colors or like we're some of those are them. new or some of, you know, or those are popular like in colors right now. Yeah. Yeah. But um, everybody likes purples and blues, right? So uh, <laughs> I just, I, I was just like, Oh, and, oh, and shout out to Carol. So the, our, our, this is Ophelia, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Ophelia. But I was like, Olivia, I don't know what Olivia is from. Carol mentioned Olivia is the character in Twelfth Night. So we're mentioning it here. And I want to say 90% of the colors that we were talking about in the Belviso are um, Shakespeare characters. Mona Lisa, no. As far as I know, uh, Shakespeare didn't actually name a character Mona Lisa. And then that one, what is the, the blue and uh, green one called? Carmella. Carmella. I'm not sure Carmella's Shakespeare. Someone tell me if it is, if there's a play that I'm not aware of. Um, I am not a Shakespearean expert. I did work at the New Jersey Shakespeare Festival as a scenic artist for two summers, but that's only so many plays. So, and was I paying attention to all the lines and characters? No, I was painting the set. So <laughs> I don't remember everything. Anyway, um, so those are the yarns we talked about yesterday were kind of new to the show and new to online. But the colors we just pointed out are brand new to the shop. So, um, and I am doing my sample, which is back down there zipped up, I think. Um, I'm doing my Belviso sample in Cleopatra, which is kind of a nice, really subtle olivey green color. So just a quick note is the bamboo pop and the Belviso are the only two yarns that are on sale yes. out of the yarns. It's not Wednesday. So none of these yarns are on discount except the ones we just mentioned because we talked about them on Wednesday. So that's another reason we're doing this today because this is not the most dangerous show of the week. This could be a dangerous show for y'all, but it's not on sale. Is we we've we've been wanting to show off some of the new colors so much so but much. we can't we also like we we can't put half the shop on sale for a wednesday show and and these are only certain colors of a whole bunch of different yarns so um let's start with I'm, i still want to save the spunky sheep to the end That's fair. but let's start with some of the older stuff and work towards some of the newer stuff so okay. united foursome yes and um the united foursome we couldn't remember, or I couldn't remember. Liz probably thinks we already showed these colors off. I don't know if we did. We talked about the United Foursome on a VSC a long time ago, and then we got new colors in. Because some of the colors that we had 
yeah. were discontinued. Yeah, and so when I went and to reorder them, I couldn't. And so I ordered some new ones. So we may not have shown them here. Um, so, so I'm just gonna, yeah, we've had them for a while actually, but you may not be aware because you may not have gone and looked at this specifically. It's always um, nice to be refreshed. Right? I've started, this is this one, I was like, ooh, reds. And it's, it's I would say burgundy, red, um, almost a fuchsia. It's not a bright fuchsia, but it's a, you know, a deep, deep pink. And then this is almost like a light orchid. Like the mm -hmm. center is more of almost a purple. And um, it's called Queen Victoria. I am working on this. You might have seen it in my morning meditations if you're following me on Instagram and Facebook a while ago. I haven't picked it up recently. I'm working on a long side project because United Foursome, it's this cotton um, wool blend and it's pretty much lace weight. Like this is 1500 meters, right? It's 1400 meters, 1,531 1, yards. And it's it's four different colors of the United that um, Queensland has. And since it's lace weight, basically, I'm doing the botanical lace um, wrap. And it's gonna take me forever. I have just scratched the surface of this outside color. So um, it's gonna take me forever, but I think it's gonna be so pretty. Like by the time I get in here, it'll be a lovely summer thing. Ah, but reds, we have lovely reds to pinks to a little bit of purple. I think that's pretty. And then we got Kangaroo Isle, mm -hmm. which is a medium teal, a light teal, a minty light green. Kind of a, a minty sagey green. Sagey green, and then a dark green. That's it just, is just I mean, yummy. Red, red family, and then we have a green teal family. I think they're pretty and then and the then <laughs> this one is bondi beach and it's a dark teal a medium a darker medium teal than what's in here i think um i want to say the inside of that might be the second color in that might be and the the next color might be yeah. there might be some overlap in colors but that's yeah and then there's a nice beachy blue yeah um uh, these two bowls together the color combos just intrigue me it's like pretty. the greens and the blues and so. And then I, you, you yeah. can go online to see the colors we already have of this. And some of the colors we already have, like I'm doing a giant massive crochet project that I've kind of stalled out on in some, in some grays and, and blues that we can't get back in. We have like maybe one skein left here in the shop. Um, but eventually I'll finish that and you go, ooh, that's so pretty. And you won't be able to get the color anymore. So, you know. Um, so that's one, that's a lace weight category. Um, see, I said, we're going old, old towards new. So, well, but I mean, but it's cotton, so we could, Never mind. We're going to bounce around a bit. Um, <coughs> Friday Harbor is our lovely, um, Merino and silk. It's really, I don't know how much silk is, is in the yarn or how much is the slubs because most of them have, have little slubs. This one. We, we, we didn't have a nice, rich, dark brown. And this is not as dark as the camera is showing it off. This is uh, dark, it's just called dark brown. And some of the Friday Harbor, it almost has a tweedy look with the flex in it. And some of it's much more mild. This one's much more mild. It, you are knitting I'm, with it. I'm knitting the contrast it's colors contrast. on my Papillon with it. Um, it's, it is, there is flecky. It looks almost like really not like it's coffee brown cabinet wood like it's just very dark it's, it's not pretty. like dark chocolate dark but it's a nice dark brown i almost want to make we i did my chain the chain shawl by um cheryl faust in an off black and a cream color and i made kits online I wonder if we should make a kit with this. That would be pretty. That We'd have to be. this and the latte maybe. Ooh, because we have a we have kind of a khaki brown latte, as the name implies. It's a lighter brown. Um, we'll investigate that later. We I need to like re-examine all the kits and see what colors either we might need to refresh on or we're out of, or the listing says we're out of, but we're not. I gotta do a lot of that. So we have a nice rich brown in the Friday Harbor. Friday Harbor is worsted weight. Like I said, it's merino and silk. It's got wonderful stitch definition for a worsted weight yarn. So like I'm doing um, 
I'm doing a two by two rib sweater out of the Ready Set Raglan book in two different colors of like tealy, greeny, blue in the Friday Harbor because I know the stitch definition is going to be so pretty. Anything you're doing with cables, this is an example of a great yarn for if you're doing a project that has some fun stitch work like cables or lace or something that's worsted weight and you want to show off the stitch definition. And on that, on, I, I think even the stitch definition going up to a nine needle mm -hmm. is like still- That looks, that looks beautiful. Really like- It's, it's just- you, you can you can get it tight or you mm -hmm. can do it a little bit and the stitch definition doesn't get muddy. Mm -hmm. loose That's in the why end. I liked it for the chain because that is garter mosaic. So it's a lot of, you see a lot of the pearl bumps, but um, with the mosaic and slipping stitches, it's got a clean look to it. It's got a really clean look to it. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go get it down because that will take up too much time. But um, okay, so there's that. Um, our favorite, favorite yarn. We, we expanded the color palette of fiber spates in the DK section. Vivacious DK. Yes, thank you for clarifying. I was getting there. <laughs> sure. um, we got four new colors. Again, people on social media have already seen this. We got four new colors because, <coughs> excuse me, we have all these lovely colors of fiber spates. Um, shout out to, to Pamela. She just got a ton of this lovely. Again, we got a theme here, right? We didn't have a nice rich brown. We had a brown and teal, which was great. And we had some other colors, which were great, but a nice, rich, vibrant brown. Um, fiber Spates Vivacious is um, both, both the thin and the thick that we have um, is 100% Superwash Merino. So squishy, soft, it's the go-to if someone wants something in DK or worsted because it's a heavy DK. We will often go, have you looked at this? Because it's got a similar feel to some Madeline Tosh faces, but the colors it, are just the like- The colors mm. and their tone. We don't have speckly so like Madeline light. Tosh. Yeah, their tone, like she said. What, so explain what that means, Liz. Um, It's not just like the, the, Friday Harbor. <laughs> the Friday Harbor, on the even spot. though it has speckles, mm -hmm. is still more of a matte, flat color. Like there's there's the speckles in it. So it kind of has a heathered look, but it just, but the, the tonal, you're going through the different colors and it just pops out like your sweater, your green sweater. My, my sorrel sweater, if y'all remember that. Yeah, Still it just there. I don't have pops it right some life mm -hmm. into the, it's, it's got variation to it, but it's not variegated shout in your face. I mean, we have a couple colors that will kind of do that in the fiber spates, but for the most part. So we got in, this one's called Copper Tones, but it's a nice rich brown, okay? Warm, rich brown. Um, this one, Dove Stone, we do have grays, but not like this. Uh, you wanna grab a skein of the, Pebble Beach was our favorite light gray. And it's a blue, brown, gray, cool gray. This one's look at that together. It's warm just, gray. Yeah. But, and then we had the smoky Joe, which was a warm gray, but it was a dark gray. This, this is just a lovely neutral. It's not super light. That's the one thing we don't have in fiber spates is like a white, but, and we could look back at what she's got. That's tonally close to that, but we just love the saturation of her colors. Um, but yeah, this, you can see the difference. This has um, a little bit of, it does have a little bit of brown in it, the Pebble Beach, but it's more bluey gray. And this one is more almost a greeny gray, but the green, it's like, if you think about lichen and, and you think about those stones that have a little bit of stuff growing on them, this color. And this is the Smoky Joe just okay. for comparison. The middle one is our dove stone, is our newest gray. Uh, so it's gonna go with a lot of different colors than the Pebble Beach wood or the Smoky Joe wood. So it's a lot lighter than the Smoky Joe. Um, we, have, we have a lot of blues, but we didn't have a nice intense blue. We had the deep teal, which is really funny. If I take a picture of this next to the deep teal, they look the same, but they're not. This is uh, Blue Lagoon. This is a nice vibrant. It's a medium blue or yeah. classic blue. It's more closer to, although classic blue tends to be almost closer to slate yeah. a bit, but 
blue lagoon it's like a blue lagoon it's not teal it's it's cooler in but but not cold it we have we have a light blue we have the denim we have the aqua the this aqua is right in the middle leans more towards teal mm -hmm. but the denim is that blue genie blue and the if light blue we had nothing in the middle a super saturated blue this is your this is your puppy right here and then you know we have all these bright pinks this Liz wanted this for a while in the DK and I kept saying no and I kept saying no and I was like no we really don't need it but now we have it <laughs> it happened the week that she wound up ordering toys from Fiber Spades because every time she places an order she counts how many skeins do we have is that enough and <laughs> and she doesn't generally order more unless we're below five skeins and we have like nine skeins of a color so she of course didn't order that and then somebody came and bought a sweater quantity worth like which eight. was eight seven or eight and she something. was like no I have to that's when we widen this palette and so we have soft pink and we have bright pink fuchsia pink now we have basically a red a strawberry we didn't have red this one's strawberry it's not like there's parts of it that are deep deeper red um it's it's a softer almost pinky red but not really but it's more red than pink you know um and and it's very nice if you like red say you want to make a sweater out of red but you don't necessarily want deep, intense red, or you want it to have a little life to it instead of being just solid. Ooh, I was just thinking a what? stripey red sweater with like the dove stone. Oh, I was, I thought you were gonna go dark and or, pretty. Well, Smokey Joe would do. Smokey Joe? Smokey Joe would be pretty, but the dove stone. Dove stone. Ooh, that could be pretty. Mm -hmm. If you wanna go with primary colors. We also have the burnish too, but I mean, that would be like, the most artistic Ernie sweater ever. So, <laughs> um, so those are our new colors in Fiber Spates DK, Vivacious DK, um, and they're they're wonderful. They they add some richness to the color palette. So, so then with your Jupiter crop, we. And I'm using all these luscious colors, and this is the um, contrast to all of them. This is the main interwoven throughout all the colors. It was this lovely dark purple. It's really like an eggplant, right? And I said, oh my gosh, we only have three skeins of this left and need I need more. two for my sweater. So let's go order more. They are back ordered because that's life. And so, and we don't know if that's because there's a supply issue or because they're phasing out this color. So we have this one skein left of this really luscious, super dark purple eggplant. So I looked online and said, hey, there's another dark purple. It's a much yeah. richer purple color. Yeah, the it's eggplant beautiful. purple. Yeah, and is that one actually called purple? What's it called? It is called Lobella. Lobella. That, the one I'm using is called Violet. Lobella. Um, all of what, the newer ones, we're gonna try to get up into the online shop sometime today. It, Lobella is not, not up there yet. Stickered. It's not even in the system, but we wanted to show y'all. It's it's a lovely, rich purple. We have a lavendery purple in the um, Patagonia, but we yeah. don't have that one. Patagonia is technically a DK weight organic merino. It's really thin for a DK. I'm using it on the Jupiter crop, which is written for sport weight, and I'm loving it. So it can, it can kind of cross barriers in terms of, I find anything that is DK to almost fingering weight, but DK is sport weight. A lot of the things in there are almost interchangeable in terms of like what the yarn company thinks they are and what I think they are. Well, <laughs> we, I would use them. We were so. helping a lady yesterday who needed a sport-ish weight. And we brought out a couple of DK options and a couple of sport weight and a couple of fingering weight options. And the Pollock, she was like, oh, but this is really thin. And you were like- The Pollock says three on it. It's supposed to be a DK. And the one she ended up getting, which is, I think, thicker. thicker. Yeah. It says two on it in terms of, you know, the little numbers in the yarn balls. Yep. Um, and she said, but that's a two. Like that's what her eye was drawn to, understandably. She said, but that's a two. And I just held up Pollock and said, they say this is a three. And- it really depends on your gauge and how you knit and and things sometimes those 
weight categories can be interchanged depending on how the yarn behaves and depending on the gauge you get. Like sometimes you can use a thinner yarn for a thicker pattern. Make sure you hit gauge, which means you might need to change your needle size. And what often happens using a thinner yarn for a pattern written for a thicker one is you get lovely, what we would call drape. Drape, just it. It will beautiful. hang nicer. It won't be as stiff. It could be open enough that you need to wear something underneath it if you're making a sweater or a top, but sometimes with something that thin, you want to do that anyway. So, it, it, I some days I look at the yarn we've gotten in and go, "What scale are you scaling this?" Mm -hmm. You know, you can't necessarily go by yardage per no. grams because of how yarn is constructed now. It might be the chainette that's super lofty, lofty yeah. and airy. And so you can cram so much yardage into the same weight, you know, unit of 50 grams yeah. or 100 grams. Um, and sometimes yarn that looks, you can't, you can't always go by how it looks either, because sometimes a yarn that looks really thin is designed to fluff when you knit with it. Or it looks really thick, but then if you if you pull if you pull a little piece out on on your finger, it thins out instantly. So when you knit with it, it's going to thin out. Yarn. I wish there was a magic uh, formula or a magic. This is this is what this does. And sometimes we only learn that by knitting with it, and we don't have time to knit with everything in the shop. Ah. We're and trying. We're, we're trying. But we're doing yeah. our darndest. <laughs> Let me tell you. Um, okay, so. Last one before we get to the special fun yummies from our local dyer is um, we were running low on bud and we talked about bud what last week? I think it maybe was only last, last week. week that that lovely nubby textured cotton that's chunky and I said okay we're really low on a couple colors we need to order it or we're out of a color or two we need to order it and guess what back ordered but. I said, but hmm, look at all these new, there's new colors that aren't even out yet that I don't know if I've invested in any of those, but I said, well, maybe we want to add to the color palette. And one of the things we discovered, Liz is holding them, is ordering yarn online. One of the reasons I'm trying to switch over from the pictures when, when we first, when the world first fell apart, I was stressed and tired i'm stressed and tired for different reasons now but and panicked about getting things online so i was pulling photos from the yarn company's websites and throwing them up on my site and for various reasons that didn't work but i'm still because we haven't let a yarn rep in here in a year because no because that takes hours and it's you know sometimes it's really fun but that takes hours and we're not letting anyone in here for hours it means i'm buying a lot of yarn from online pictures, which is always a gamble. I, I was looking around to see if there was a grain that was close to what it looked like. What we thought. On, what we thought it it looked like. I was wondering where you're looking around and I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. So we don't have a grain in the butt, do we? I don't think we do. We have a grella. We have the grella. Which we yes. have always considered our green and yellow because it's grello. Yeah. <laughs> it is that's why we nature. got it but it's very warm and yeah. and we saw i saw this green there were two greens one was like an evergreen supposedly but it wasn't out yet and one was actually looked really close to that it was almost like a kelly green but not quite as super saturated as that but it was like yeah it, it was, was a good green it looked like it could be a decent green and it might go with the colors we have and then there was also one that looked like it was a lighter gray, we have a, the silver sage is a dark gray. Wonderful, it makes really cool modern looking baby blankets. And I said, we probably need a, a lighter gray, but it looked like a warm gray. So I, I bought them. I like this one, Moonflower. I like both of them, but it's they're not what I thought I was buying. A blue silvery yeah, light gray. Yeah, it's a light gray. It's like, we have, a, we have Candy Tuft, which is a lovely cream. And this is like almost white. But, but and, and almost light gray, but it's like in between the two. Yeah. Um, it's it. I would. I'm not saying it's white. It's not. But it's it's much cooler than the other neutral that we have. Um, it's it's awesome. I'm really excited. Nothing like now, the picture. <laughs> not like the picture that I thought I was looking at. Um, this was supposed to be more green, and it is in fact really quickly. That's pretty close on the camera. Pretty yeah, close to what it it's it's is. it's a little warmer than it shows on the camera, but the whole thing is much cooler than we thought we were getting. 
So um, I'm, fi- I'm seeing if I can find really, really fast. It, it was a, oh, I like it, huh. but, uh, huh. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. So let's, let's try this. Ready, ready, ready. Uh-huh. There is a more um, probably yellow green, but since we have the green yellow, so seafoam lily, right? Seafoam lily. That's the color we thought we were getting. Can you hold that up again? Yeah. I'm sorry. She was starting to knit. See, I thought I was getting a much warmer green, but I'm not unhappy with what we got. And then, um, can you hold up the... Yeah. Oh, don't even tell me. What? It's just continue. No, what's it called? What's that one called? Moonflower. Oh, I've got a magnolia here. Oh, there's moonflower. I I didn't recognize it. See, I thought I was getting a warm gray. Instead, I got a very cool gray. That's okay. I'm not unhappy with it, but yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's it's not it, it's not the same. Um, and the funny thing is, when I take photos with my phone, it tends to cool things off quite a bit. But these look quite warmer. Like someone overcorrected it when they were trying to to manipulate the color so we could buy the right color. But there's always what you view it through could be affecting the color. If you have if you have the um, the warmth turned up on your phone, because that's better, less blue light, right? Less annoyance for your eyes. You're seeing it differently. So I do my best to try to make sure that the color we take is is the color that it really is. But then you could be viewing it. I have a disclaimer on the website. You could be viewing it through something that is altering color. Every every it's independent so yarn, <laughs> you know, should have, and most of them do a disclaimer saying, hey, the picture you're looking at, we tried everything we can do to get it right when we put it on our website. But if it's your phone, your computer, your whatever, it's going to change. The lighting in the room you are sitting in on YouTube can change what you see on a computer. And what you're viewing our show on can yeah. change what we're trying to show you. So yeah. what we're seeing and describing as being different than what it really is. Could, uh, <sighs> go around in circles. Eat, Love, Knit is a really massively awesome, huge online, um, huge shop that's online. And their ads say, we color correct. We ha- The color will be correct. And I'm always blown away by that. I'm like, if you can, that's fantastic. But I'm always blown away by that because I'm like, but it's so hard, even if they get it 100% correct, what you're viewing it through could change it still. So it's a little, it, yeah, it's, it's wonky. Um, <coughs> their, their shop site on their monitors on their phones is correct. Once it leaves that <laughs> and goes across the interwebs to somebody else's yeah. phone or we, computer, it may not be. We have a knitter who, um, has looked on two different devices in her house at something on our website and seen different colors because the computer and the phone pull it up differently. Okay, so uh, on that note, the color you're about to see may not be correct. Um, So to refresh you on my lovely stay out of the forest shawl, right? Which is hanging in our window. It's so pretty. And squishy. And squishy and yummy. And I'm going to love it and have it, hug it and call it George. Um, So this was made from um, a combo pack that Spunky Sheep, who's one of our lovely indie dyers just over the border in South Carolina, made for me. And you can see she made us a whole bunch of kits that have the top three colors here, which is um, I want it's onyx, silver. I'm trying to remember what this one was. We can look it up. Um, it's like it's River tired Stone brain. Or Riverstone, or yes, tired brain. And then a different pop color. She she put together different pop colors. These are mildly tonal. What she's because the hand dye. It's not going to be like solid, consistent color on purpose. When you hand dye, it's almost impossible for that to happen. And that's a good thing because, because it shows that it's been hand dyed. Um, but these are the same amounts of yarn for each one. But see how things look like they're getting thinner because the shawl's getting wider. It's a ton of yardage. It's sport weight yarn, four skeins. And 
Um, we got in two different varieties, right? Two so, different bases. Bases, yes. So this is the same. I don't really want to take all of them out of the bag. We can help it, although the glare is going to make it really hard to see. This is the same combo on mine is alpaca, merino, and silk. This is 100% merino. Yep. Different price range, right? The ones that are 100% merino, again, those three top colors and then a pop color. This is with a teal, which is gorgeous. Um, the merino ones are $100. The ones like I made mine out of are $130, I want to say. But the merino will, will have a super saturated, darker color. Like even this, you take, take this one out, right? I, I left that open so you could yeah. take it out because all the rest are kind of taped shut. So if we compare the colors, this is the same dye, right? But on a different base. So the onyx on merino, for the most part, they're all going to be somewhat individual too. The onyx on the merino is going to be darker. The silver is going to be a little more intense too, but you can see the tonality in that. The river stone, again, is going to be a little darker, but look at that tonality. It is just gorgeous. And then we don't have this in, in the fancy combo because it's already been bought, but look at that teal. It is just luscious and dark and warmer than the camera is making it. But we have the other colors. We have all of them still. They're lovely. I would say for... Unless you're super bigger size, this is enough yarn to make quite a nice um, sweater. Yes. You know, it's enough yardage. I ran out of yarn for this shawl. It I had to be modify about, a little, but the shawl's huge. 1,300 yards. About. Mm -hmm. Just about <laughs> maybe 12. She, to three, be. 328. You want to do some math? Yeah. 328 I times four. I mean, that's 1,200 and then 28. 30 times four. You don't have to do the math. I can She's pull my calculator. My head math 328. is not going to keep up. 328 times 4. It's 1,312 yards. 1,312 yards. Okay. And I had to modify a little because when changing colors, I didn't use all of my skeins. So um, here, I'm going to pull these out. I want to get similar colors. There we go. So one color combo has a really nice purple, but here's the cool thing. You can see, well, maybe kind of see. Can you see how this is lighter than this one? This is Merino. This is Alpaca Merino and Silk. So we've got a lovely purple. Same top three colors. Uh, she designed these kind of as fade packs, but as you can see what I did with mine, the, the fade is not subtle. There are colors that go together that you can do a fade stripey thing with to change from one color to the other. But it, it won't be a subtle moving from color to color. It'll just be these colors go so well together. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm looking, there we go, let me get this. This one, so sorry, the purple is actually called lilac. Lilac. This is the other color I almost did mine out of. This is bronze. Bronze Age. It's it's gorgeous. And too. this is the fancy, and this is the straight up merino. They're both going to be soft. The alpaca and silk are just going to make it super soft. So you can see how this is a much more subtle color than this one, but they're both wonderful. This is fern it's a nice electric green and again you can see this one it's not just because the light is coming from over there this one if i move them around this one is fancy brighter is, is is softer it's lighter yeah more intense yeah color in the merino straight up merino but um it's going to be lighter brighter there you go oh i knocked i knocked our guy i knocked her or squirrel. Chippy, stay. Okay. Chippy likes to take naps. It's just easier that way. 
That's your rose gold. It is. I was just looking at which is which. So this is what I made my shawl out of. Let's see. Do, do, do. And they won't be exactly perfectly the same because she's hand dyeing them, but they'll be really close. So this is the combo merino, alpaca, and silk. And this is straight up merino. They're so wonderful. There's so much, like, again, 1300 yards. You can make something fantastically amazing out of these. These are online as um, the steampunk combos, because that's what she called them. I think that's really fun. If you're into steampunk, oh, there we go. These are just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And we hadn't actually, I knocked him over again. I'm gonna leave him. He's gonna take a nap on the um, merino. Yeah. <laughs> We hadn't showed them off before. They've been hanging behind us. We've vaguely referenced them, but I wanted to show them off because they're just gorgeous. And this was like, every time I came back to this, knitting with this was just divine. It was absolutely That combination, divine. alpaca, merino, and silk is just really a soft, In whatever warm, whatever percentages yeah. they are, it's soft and warm and wonderful. And the merino by itself is going to be wonderful too, but the extra yummy, <laughs> extra yummy. Love it. So it's about time for us to open the shop. I don't think we have a 10 o'clock appointment because she came in at the end of the day yesterday, but we should get ready and we should open the shop and clean up all these lovelies that we just showed you. Ah, so I'm going to work today on making sure the new ones that weren't already online go online. I'll do as much as I can with the description to give you links to the specific yarns we talked about. But this yarn is not on sale, except for the two that we talked about yesterday. But if you can help us get to 500 subscribers, everything's we're so awesome. close. I think we're still seven away. Seven people, people. <laughs> so again, like I said yesterday, if you are someone who is watching, uh, it's like the longtime listener, first time caller. Long time watcher, try subscribing because you could help us get a sale. And then you could be the champion of the day. Yay! You could say, I helped do that. So, um, or, you know, tell your friends about it. See if any of them want to subscribe because it's cool. It's fun. And we all, we all win. <laughs> Yay. Sale um, for everybody. I think we're tired. She just yawned. Yeah. It was a weird night last night. <laughs> um yeah so knit night tomorrow night yeah join us on zoom with the shop phone number 828-877-3550 we had fun on tuesday we'll have we fun again a week from saturday is our virtual duo platform sit and stitch on facebook live and zoom and we'll talk more about that next week it'll also be um local yarn store day we have all kinds of fun things coming up next week. Oh, oh my gosh. Stay tuned because you never know what's going to happen this month. Just watch. Yeah. <laughs> keep up too. It's I mean, we're, we're seven <laughs> away from YouTube. So theoretically, we could wind up having a YouTube sale in April. And we have a couple other maybe sales planned too. You'll have to watch and find out or go on social media yeah. and find out. But if we get 500 subscribers, that's only going to be mentioned on YouTube. And not in the description, only from watching us. So <laughs> keep an eye on how many subscribers there yes. are because you might want to go and watch that episode. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure we'll mention it for a few episodes because it, it shouldn't just be a one a one oh, off no. sale because we've been trying so hard to get here. So and then we'll have to set another benchmark to reach. Yay. So we'll start all over again. Um, OK, yeah, I'm starting to get yeah. a little tired <laughs> myself. So, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. the coffee okay. club yeah yeah and they're power washing the street today so be careful if you come by today because you know you might have to jump over some power washers to get they're, to they're, they're power washing the sidewalk not the actual street no. street so just the sidewalk but you know it's where you're going to be walking at some point to get to us <laughs> yeah. there will be power washers in the way we don't yeah. know when anyway but not yet so Next week, everything will be right on course. So join us Tuesday. If you're not doing the social media thing and joining us for Sit and Stitch, we will see you on Tuesday. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. We miss y'all. Bye.